All right, hello again, Algebra Two people. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about um, the first day of quadratics, really. Uh, and uh, in class, I'm not going to go into this in the video, but we talked about some real life applications of quadratics, some of which we'll be getting into later on uh, in this unit and the next unit. Uh, but we're going to start off talking about some of the attributes, and there's a lot of them. Uh, but the first ones we kind of already know, even from uh, our work with absolute value functions. So, and just like we're going to do all year long, we're sort of talking about the transformations, but we're not really going to focus on the transformations themselves. We're going to more focus on uh, how the transformations relate to some of these different attributes, like domain, range, axis of symmetry, vertex, and stuff like that. Um, so let's run through this real quickly uh, and then get into what those attributes are and kind of how to figure out, what, uh, try to figure out what they do. Uh, so these, this is no surprise at all. In fact, you could probably pause the video if you wanted to and, and fill these out just based on what you already know about the parent functions. But let's run through these real quick. So just like normal, if your A value is less than one, that is a vertical compression or vertically compressed, which visually that just means it's going to make it wider or fatter or what do you want to, how do you want to call that? And then of course, if A is greater than one, that's going to be vertically stretched. And remember, it's just the value itself, right? We'll talk about the negative sign in a second. You already know what that does. Uh, but just the value itself, so um, make sure you know that. And then, again, if it's stretched, uh, visually, we know that makes a parabola. Um, it's going to make it either uh, skinnier or narrower. Uh, again, however you want to kind of visualize that or describe that. Uh, the K value, again, no surprise here. Uh, that's moving everything. Uh, if it's a positive K on the outside, it's going to move it's going to shift everything up. If it's a negative on the outside, it's going to shift everything down. Um, and then, of course, the H value looks backwards, even though it's really not backwards. So if you see X minus H in parentheses, that is shifting right or translating right. But what that really means, of course, is that H is greater than zero, which makes sense because it's going right. Same thing if you see X plus H. It's moving left, uh, and again, that means your h is less than zero, which is negative. Okay, so again, no surprises there. Uh, oh, and then the last one, to, I mentioned this a second ago with the a value. Remember, if you see a negative in front, that is automatically a reflection over the x-axis. No, it's going to be upside down. Right? And just like FC value functions, we're not going to worry about the b values. Um, B values come up a little bit later on in the year, but they're not really going to come, but really be super important until you hit trig in, uh, in pre calc. Okay, so let's talk about the parent function a little bit. Uh, so here is our graph of the x squared function, also called the quadratic function. Um, what's the domain of this? So if, you, if you're looking at that graph right there, and of course it goes on forever and ever, uh, the domain of that obviously would be all real numbers or we can write it as negative infinity to infinity. And that's really not going to change. The only time the domain will change for a quadratic is if we have like a real life situation, uh, which again, we will talk about in, uh, in, in the coming weeks, then the domain might be restricted based on the situation. But overall, the domain is going to be all real numbers. OK, uh, how about the range? Well, again, just based on the parent function here, we see that it goes from zero to infinity and it does include zero. So it's going to get a bracket uh, in general. And I'm going to put this in red in general for any quadratic based on the vertex and based on our transformations that we talked about up here. Right. The, the range is either going to be uh, k to infinity or negative infinity to k depending on what the a value is if it's opening up or opening down okay and we'll get more into this in a few minutes the vertex again for the parent function is just zero zero it's the origin 
Um, and again, we can generalize that for any function you ever see, uh, the vertex is going to be that HK value. So if we know vertex form and we know that transformation form, if we know that, then my HK is going to automatically be the vertex. And then same thing with the axis of symmetry, right? The axis of symmetry is that line that cuts the graph in half. So again, for the parent function, that line is just the y-axis. We also write that as x equals zero. But for any general quadratic, anywhere it is, uh, it's going to be x equals h. So in other words, if, if it shifts left to right, that's what's going to change the axis of symmetry. Okay. And then there's one more thing we got to talk about. So, and, and this is only due to the A value, right? So if the A value is positive, anything positive, I don't care what it is, anything positive, then that vertex point is going to be a minimum point. And that should make sense by looking at the graph, right? Because in this case here, my A is positive because it's just one. And that vertex is the lowest it ever gets to. So it would be a minimum point. And then again, just like, and then the opposite is true. So if A is negative, uh, that means that the vertex will be a maximum point. And in fact, we really talk about these minimum maximums we refer to the y values. And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes when we get into uh, the examples. Okay? So how can we ask questions like this? What, uh, what, what's going to be the case as we look into uh, these type of questions just based on, again, basic transformations, domain range, and stuff like that? So we turn that page over. We have this, right? Let's talk about a couple of these. So, first example, pairing quadratic function is translated to three left. So that's probably important. Uh, two units up and vertically stretched by a factor of five. So, and again, this is no surprise based on what we've been doing already this year. But we see this is our H. So H is going to be negative three. My K is going to be positive two because it's going up. And then of course vertically stretched, so that's just my A is five. So my equation would be Y equals five parentheses. That's my X minus H, so it'd be X plus three squared, all quadratics, and then plus two. Domain, said a second ago, always the same. But now let's, talk, let's, let's think of these general cases based on what we just said right here. And if you need to pause the video and make sure and write this down or take a picture or something like that, because uh, I'm going to use these things I put in red uh, for the rest of these questions. All right. So if we're talking about the vertex, well, we, get, we can get the vertex right out of my H and K value. It is just H and K every single time. So my vertex is going to be negative 3, 2. My axis of symmetry, I'm going to write that down again, actually. My axis of symmetry is going to be just the h value. So it's just going to be a, uh, x equals negative 3 every time. And my minimum maximum value is going to be the k value. So in this case, uh, it would be y equals 2. And again, every single time, it's going to be the minimum maximum value is going to be y equals k. And in this case, since it is opening up, how do I know it's opening up? Because the a value is positive, then I know it is going to be a minimum value. Okay? And then now I can go back and do the range because I kind of left that until I was did this stuff. Again, I know it's opening up. So if I know it's opening up, then my range is going to start at k and just go to infinity. So in this case, it'll be from 2 to infinity. Okay. Uh, 
about letter B? Let's do the same thing. So now we have one that's reflected over the x-axis, one right, four down. So again, reflected over the x-axis, that's my A. It would be a negative one since it's not doing anything else. My shifted one unit to the right. So that's going to be H is positive one. Four units down, K would be negative four. And again, my A is negative one since there's no stretching or compressing going on. So my equation here would be negative one or just negative parentheses, X minus one going to the right squared and then minus four. Domain, again, never gonna change. So let's go and do this bottom row. I'll do the range last again. So vertex, again, HK. What is my HK? One, negative four. Axis symmetry, X equals H, X equals one. Minimum maximum value, notice here, since it's reflected, it's going upside down. So, you know, it's going up like this, right? So it's going to be, a, that vertex is going to be a maximum value, and it's going to be whatever k is. In this case, my k is negative 4. So y equals negative 4. And then same thing, once you know it's a maximum value, I know it's upside down, so that means my range is going to be from negative infinity to negative 4, again, with a bracket. Because remember, we always think low to high anytime we're writing this. Right, tell me right in the range. So I'm going to ask you real quick, pause the video, uh, see if you can do part C here by yourself, and we'll zip through this, and then we'll finish up the rest of these things uh, to finish up the video. Okay, so hopefully you got part C done here. So again, vertically compressed, that's my A, shifted left 7. So there is no K in this case, so K is 0. So my equation would look like uh, one-third, there's my A, and again, it's not being reflected, so it's positive. Uh, going left seven, so that would be X plus seven squared, and there's no K. If you want to put plus zero in the end, you can, don't have to. Domain, always the same. Vertex, again, HK, every single time. So my H is negative seven, since it's going left. K is zero, it didn't change. Axis of symmetry is the H, so X equals negative 7. And then look at your A, since it's positive, I know it's opening up, so that means it's a minimum value for the vertex, and it's just K, so Y equals 0. And since it's opening up, the range is going to go up, so it would be from 0 to infinity. Okay. Uh, we can go the other direction too, so I can give you the function. This is kind of the, I guess, like the traditional direction, if you will. Um, so look at this. We can list the transformations. Let's just go one by one here. So we see a negative right off the bat reflected across the x-axis. And then we see the coefficient 5 over 2. Don't get fooled by this. 5 over 2 is greater than 1, so that is a vertical stretch. And x plus 6, that means I'm going left, because h is negative. And I'm going down 9. My vertex, hk, again, and just think about transformations, right? So if I go left 6 and down 9, where am I? I'm at negative 6, negative 9. And then once you have those, axis symmetry, and the min-max would just come right directly from those numbers. So axis of symmetry, x equals negative 6, always the h value. Minimum maximum, again, since it's going upside down, this will be a maximum value. And it's just whatever the k is, so in this case, negative 9. I'm also going to add in the domain and range here just for kicks. So domain, always the same, not very interesting. Range in this case. Since it's upside down, it goes from negative infinity to k. 
So negative infinity to negative nine. Uh, letter E. Again, if you want to pause the video real fast and do this on your own, that'd be great. But I'm going to go and zip through the answers. So you look at the coefficient. It's positive. And it's three-fourths. That one is less than, less than one, so that's definitely a vertical compress. And then x minus four inside, that's going to the right. And a plus one going up. Vertex, and again, think of transformations. If it goes right four and up one, that's at four one. Don't overthink it. Axis symmetry, always that left right. So x equals four. Minimum maximum, since it's opening up, because my a is positive, it is a minimum value. Y equals one k is and again domain would be infinity to infinity and the range since it's opening up it starts at k in this case one to infinity okay last couple uh, I kind of like these kind of questions honestly because it makes you make sure you know the different the similarity and the connection between these words, axis of symmetry, minimum value, maximum values, uh, and the vertex, and then be able to put all that together into a equation, right? So axis of symmetry, again, we know that is H. Minimum value, got to think about that for a second. And then whatever Y is, that is K. So, oh, look, I have my vertex, right? So I can say that y equals, I'm going to leave a space in the, before my parentheses, so it'll be x, uh, x minus 3 squared minus 5. And then I've got to do for the a value, I don't know anything about if it's stretch or compressor or something like that, so that's why it's called a possible equation. But I do know it has to be positive because it's a minimum value. So you can pick any positive number you want to, positive three or seven or 28 or whatever, whatever your favorite number is. As long as it's positive, that would be a possible equation that would fit that situation. Okay, how about letter G? Again, axis of symmetry, there's your H, Y equals one, there's your K, and this time it's a maximum value. Okay, so again, Y equals, and leave space, X plus nine, quantity squared plus one, H and K, negative nine plus one. And then again, we know it's a maximum, so I know it's gonna be a negative A. So again, pick your favorite number. Uh, I'm gonna pick negative six, what the heck. But as long as it's negative, then I'll satisfy that. And then the last one, axis symmetry zero, minimum value negative two. So again, that's our H, that's our K. And it's a minimum. So y equals x minus zero. You can just write x if you want to. And then minus two. And then it's a minimum value, so we know it's going up. So we know it's going to be positive. So positive, again, favorite number. Let's do four. And that's it. Okay, so that's part one of the attributes. And the next one, we're going to talk about something called a focus and a directrix. And uh, we will cover that in the next one. So if you have any questions, as always, come in tutoring. And until next time, stay safe.